Hi guys, thanks for joining my YouTube channel. The question of the day is, how long has Destiny known Martell? Well, in Destiny's interview, she said her and Martell went to junior high school together. Let's keep in mind, Destiny has lived in several different states. I think she's lived in five states. Uh, she lived in Huntsville, then she moved. Uh, to several different states and she said her and LeBarrick was dating long distance. So this would answer the questioning as to why uh, Martell never invited her to him and Mel's cookouts or birthday parties or so on and so forth. She said she just moved back to Huntsville um, when she got, I believe, engaged or was going to be ready to, when she was ready to be married. To her husband, who was her fiance for two years, I believe. She said her and Martel met in junior high school, then she left, and then she came back to Huntsville for um, high school. And she said they both were popular. Um, he was a football player and she was a cheerleader. And so they would see each other, you know, they interacted a lot at games and so on and so forth. They would see each other at different um, sporting events and games around town and, you know, in other towns. She also indicated that Miss um, Maureen dated her dad. Oh my goodness, I couldn't believe that. <laughs> that was so ironic. She said uh, her dad, you know, who's 70 years old now, had a relationship some time ago with Miss Morleen, and that's why they have a rapport. That's why they're so close. So that should answer some of your questions that you have about uh, Martell and uh, Destiny's relationship. Uh, they did go to junior high school together. Um, they didn't go to the same high school, but they were both, uh, she says, very popular around town. She was a cheerleader and he was a... Um, a football player and so you know a lot of people knew them oh she also says she dated his cousin she says she dated um, Martell's cousin and that her cousin uh, was married to one of his cousins oh my goodness that's a lot and they have two kids together and they're no longer together and Martell and her husband are very close. They've known each other since they were like six. And she said they have very similar personalities. She did indicate that not as far as cheating, but they're both arrogant. They're both bullheaded, you know, uh, conceited. Um, you know, they both want their way or the highway. And she said they have a lot of similarities because the question was asked. So how are you friends with Martell if you couldn't get along with your husband and he's just like Martell? So she did reiterate, you know, what she meant by that. And the arrogance was a big piece. You know, um, she said her husband was very tight fisted. He was very stingy with her. You know, she was pregnant and um, she had just moved here from, um, I want to say Atlanta or Tennessee. And, um, you know, she just started Milani. She quit her job because she found out she was pregnant. And, you know, she had to be on bed rest because I believe she said she had six miscarriages before this one. They thought they were going to have to do in vitro fertilization. And so they planned it that she would stay at her corporate job for a year because the job, uh, one of the benefits was to pay for the first round of in vitro and it is very expensive so they planned that as a team that she would you know stay in the long distance relationship for at least a year to get those benefits from the job but she said she got pregnant on her own so she didn't need to uh, do that year so she left the job right away to move to Huntsville but when she came here starting a new business you know they had got the house you know, without a down payment, because he has, you know, he's military, excellent credit, so on and so forth. 
And I was very surprised to hear that she allowed him to just have her name on the house. That is a no-no. Oh, my goodness. Yes, she indicated that um, this is why she has to um, probably leave the house because she said she tried to refinance. You know, it's still being worked on, but her time is up. He agreed to pay the mortgage for one year without paying child support to pretty much let her get on her feet, you know, because of the divorce. And so she said her year is up. His name is the only one on the mortgage. In order for her to stay there, she needed to refinance to um, have the debt, you know, put over to her credit. And so I don't know, um, you know, if that's been done. That's what you've been hearing in the blogs about her being foreclosed on. So she did um, clear that up. She also indicated that um, her he did have full custody for three days. He did have full custody for three days. It was a um, default. It was a default, default judgment, because she said she did receive the, um, you know, the court order for the for the divorce. But she was so distraught. She had just had a baby. You know, she had brain fog, and you know, she just didn't want to deal with it. She said, but she did send the documents over to Labaric. And LeBaric, you know, he neglected to notify the courts that he had heard from her. And so they defaulted on her. And they gave him everything she said he asked for in the divorce, including full custody. So she said it was a weekend and there was nothing she could do. But you better bet your bottom dollar, Monday morning, she was at that courthouse getting that, you know, uh, uh, rescinded getting that rescinded. And so she says she has primary custody of her son. And, you know, he gets the son, I believe, one day a week and then every other weekend. You know, so she did say, you know, she said, yes, he did have full custody, but only for three days. And, um, you know, so that was quickly rescinded when the courthouse opened uh, that first weekday, which was the Monday. I was very annoyed to hear that um, LeBaric is trying to muddy up her name. I mean, he is on a campaign. Somebody in his family is the one that wrote that letter to the blogs. She said, because there was so much information that was correct, but it was a lot of lies as well. She said she never cheated. She said, you know, they just knew too much. It had to be um, somebody in his family, somebody that knows him very well to know that he was military, to know they uh, got their house without any money down, to know that he had gotten the full custody. But of course, they didn't indicate the time frame. to know a lot of stuff, you know? So she said, you know, he is, you know, very vindictive. She said he didn't want to take care of her. He didn't want to give her money. You know, she needs to be a stay-at-home wife for a time frame. You know, of course, she was going to go back to work but she needed to be on bed rest because she is a high risk pregnancy. And he refused, he refused. And she said that was part of the demise. And so, you know, these are her, you know, this is her truth. You know, none of us know the, um, the full truth, but, um, you know, she said that she did say she wouldn't talk about him. She did sign, um, an agreement, not really like a, um, not really a cease and desist or like a um, anything else, you know, legally. But she did agree because he asked and he sent Kingdom Reign um, court documents saying that they couldn't mention him on the show as well. And so that's why we haven't really, that's why she said she hasn't really said that much. Even though she wants to talk, she really can't, you know, say all what she wants. She just wants to clear up the rumors that's been out, you know, as far as a foreclosure. She says she hasn't gotten anything about a foreclosure, but she has been in the process of trying to refinance. And, um, you know, they're still working on that, but her time is, is coming to a close. You know, that year was correct information. And so she did, um, 
you know, uh, say that that was correct. But the, you know, part of it was wrong about a foreclosure because that wasn't correct, but it was a refinance. She also said, um, you know, she talked about Madani. She talked about getting a PPP loan, which she said she didn't get one because she was speaking about her personal finances. And she said, you know, like everybody knows that a PPP loan is not for personal. You know, it was for the business. So, you know, that money did go back, you know, as per her, the money did go back in to the business. And she said, Madani is doing well. You know, it is open. Um, God is sending her employees and, you know, they're moving forward. She's working on the suites and a new product line. And so uh, things are looking up. She says she does have her son full time. She has full custody of him. Um, and you know, the father sees him, uh, once a week and then every other weekend, she said, uh, you know, she still loves Mel. She still supports Mel. She said, um, she did buy Mel's, uh, skincare line. Um, she did buy Mel's skincare line, which Mel sent her the money back. She did, uh, purchase, um, I believe it was some merchandise from Mel. I know she said the skincare line, and I, I, I'm not sure if it was the God Said Go or the new t-shirt she has. She said Mel did send her money. That was another thing. Uh, Mel indicated, you know, um, on um, Instagram that, you know, Destiny knows she was a good friend to her. She sent Destiny money. You know, Destiny was very moved by that. She said, you know, she, you know, was very disappointed to hear that, but Mel did send her money and she said she never asked for the money. She told Mel, you don't have to send me money. Let me send you this back. And, you know, Mel was like, no, uh, you know, I guess Mel thought she could use the money or whatever. And so she said she, you know, she appreciated it. She thanked her and so on and so forth. It was never a need. She never told Mel she was in need or needed the money. But, you know, Mel did that from, you know, from her heart or whatever, you know, she's she's considering if it was from the heart because she talked about it after. And she said she would never, you know, do that, even though, um, you know, her and Mel is not on good terms now. She still loves her. She still supports her and she would never try to, uh, you know, she's going to just defend herself. She's never going to try to say anything that's not so. Um, you know, with Mel, she said her and Tisha was not talking about Mel. She said, um, you know, and she doesn't believe that Mel was next door to her. She believes strongly that Mel was, you know, tiptoeing around listening, you know, and she said Mel, um, was listening at the door and heard, um, what they were talking about. Um, I forget what she said they were talking about some things about the reunion and oh um tisha had said you know that she thought it was very unfair and it hurt her that um when martel was asked would he have married arion he couldn't answer and they said they were very moved by that and so that was one of the um things they were talking about when they heard when mel heard them talking and she said, you know, she never said she didn't talk to Mel. Well, she said she didn't talk to her on the phone. She never said she didn't text her. So she said, you know, I said that we hadn't talked, you know, but they had been in communication by text, but she said she hadn't seen her, you know, in uh, quite, a, quite a bit of time when she would normally talk to Mel all the time. And it wasn't that she needed her to babysit or anything, she just, you know, needed support because she said she had a mother-in-law from hell. <laughs> and she said her mother-in-law was Godzilla. Like, <laughs> you know, and, you know, he was a mama's boy and he didn't know how to leave and cleave his mother. His mother was in everything. And she said that was part of the demise as well. You know, a lot of his family situation. And she said he is a very hardworking man. You know, he does you know, make good money at Bowen's, his job, but she doesn't know what he does with his money. She said he took really good care of her before the marriage. 
He wined and dined to get her. He wined and dined her, bought beautiful gifts and so on and so forth. She said, but after the marriage, things went downhill. And I, 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 that, that's, that's so ironic. That's so ironic. She said he wanted to split everything down to the cable bill. <laughs> this woman who quit her job in corporate America to move to be with a man in another state with no income. I guess she had some savings and so on and so forth, which she opened up Madani with. But he um, he wanted her to pay her share. And she was bedridden. You know, she was a, a high-risk pregnancy and couldn't work. She said it was during COVID and, you know, she couldn't do anything. She couldn't get out and hustle. So, yes, yeah, she did you know, fall back on to public assistance. They did help her because, you know, he had uh, set something up with the courts. She said they, he, she got served in her driveway. Her and her son was out during COVID getting some sun. She said she was getting um, um, law, some sun, and they came up and served her papers for a divorce. And he was upstairs chilling in the house. They were still living in the house. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? And she said she walked in the house like nothing. She never even told him that she got served. She said, you know, they, they talked, they, you know, he, saw, he filed for the divorce or whatever, and they did the default or whatever, and then she said they got back together. She said they got back together. She said Mel knew every detail of her divorce, except, you know, she, she knew when we saw on TV about the signing. She said, but Mel knew all the details. So she doesn't understand, you know, why she led the viewers to believe that um, I kept it a secret. She said, because, you know, me and Mel had that in common. We leaned on each other because we both, you know, were being divorced or had been divorced or whatever. And it was so heavy. It was very heavy. It was very heavy, the interview, because... I mean, they had this guy painted out to be, you know, such a saint, you know, like I said, I know him, you know, I've, I've, I've seen his, you know, his stuff. He seems to be a man of God, but not from what his ex-wife is saying, not from what his ex-wife is saying. And again, you know, she couldn't really go into details probably the way she wanted to, but, um, mm -mm. he, he's something else that, um, Labaric, uh, allegedly, you know, because of uh, what she is saying. You know, she said he, she was living, uh, you know, she was living in hell with him. And she said, you know, from, you know, being a Christian and she really wanted to prove to herself because she didn't have her mother. She said she grew up in the foster care system and, you know, it was her goal to be a good mother, a good wife. She wanted to prove to herself that she could be a wife that she could be a mother and God blessed her with law, but she was gonna fight for her marriage come high, hell or high waters. And he just gave up on it. She said, you know, but it was a good thing because she said she would have still been in it, still trying to fight and change him. And the red flags were up. She said the red flags were there all the time, but she was trying to change him. And, you know, she realized she couldn't. So thanks again, guys. I'm sure I'll have more, you know, when I think about it, but it's so much. Uh, it's so much to this interview, but I did want to touch on, um, you know, the uh, points that I made, uh, especially about how long she's known uh, Martell, you know, as per her truth, and, you know, why she hadn't been at, you know, as Mel indicated, the birthday parties and the cookouts and so on and so forth. You know, um, so thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.